Hi guys, this tutorial is on how to use the PDF form fill feature. There's going to be a few different tutorials on this feature because there's a, you know how to set up forms if you're going to create new ones, and then there's how to use a form that's already been created for you. It's a there's multiple different topics involved here, so we'll split this up. So I've gone to open template and I opened up the wind mitigation template. That's one of the examples that's included with Home Inspector Pro. And there's a couple things we're looking at. So if I go to insert PDF document in this template, I'll find the WinMIP form. I'm going to click fill uh, and print WinMIP. Now what you'll see is all the, for, the, all the fields within the form are on the left hand side. So inspection date, owner name, owner information, contact person. All these fields are fields that are in the actual form. So if I go down here, you know, this is building code, uh, which was number one. This was asphalt singles. This is concrete clays. And within each one, here's the check mark for 1A, the permit date, 1B, 1C. Technically, you could go down and you could just fill out all this information yourself. Uh, but that's not really the goal of this feature. The goal is to be able to do this directly from Hit Mobile or on the desktop, just like you would a normal inspection. In fact, you can even take this template, save it as an inspection, and merge it into your own default template and just turn on or off a form like WinMIT if you're going to uh, use it for one particular inspection. Within this form, just briefly, you'll see um, the value that is from that particular inspection will show up in the first field unless it's something that we've set up as a variable. So uh, right here, we have a list of all the different variables that are available. And for example, in this case, the address, we want to map to the client inspection address, and that's from the client info page. That way you're never actually having to type that in. You've already typed it in for your general inspection, or you've imported it from ISN or from HIP office, and that data is automatically there. The values in the boxes that are currently blank, those are the things that we're going to collect inside of Home Inspector Pro. And then when we're done doing the report, we'll click on populate form, It'll merge all that data in here, and then when we generate the form, it'll have that information. So I'm going to close out of this. Now, how does this look? So I'm going to go over here under Wind Mitigation, and the tabs here are how we've chosen to split things up for this form. You can actually split this up in a million different ways. We've already created Wind Mitigation, and we're creating many more other forms that you can use here, but the, the point is, is that you can actually create your own custom forms with this feature as well. Uh, we already have some people that are actually inserting marketing PDFs and warranties and other things into the back of the report. And they simply have one or two values that pull, such as the client name, that will automatically fill into that form as well. This is a, a more complicated form doing the women. So under property owner information, you see we have our note feature. So the note feature here, county, insurance company, policy, stories, those actually map to the actual PDF. So in the PDF, we have a field called stories, one called county, one called insurance company and policy. And when I select these, so for example, I select this and I say it's Broward, or I go in and I actually change it, click OK. And then for the insurance company, I'm simply going to select it for the policy. I'll type in a policy. And then for stories, I'm just going to select two because it's a two-story house. Now, back on the PDF form, you'll see property information was the first thing that we had. And if I click on populate form, it pulled in that information, DeSoto, citizens, policies, stories, a uh, year of home would come from the client info page. Uh, obviously, I didn't type that in, so I need to type that into client info, and it'll fill that out as well. So the county was there, citizens is there, the policy number. And I can manually type something in here if I, I wanted to as well. And that data will show up on the PDF when we generate the report. I'm going to save that. So to finish the WinMIT on mobile or on desktop, you're simply going to go through each field. Uh, qualified inspector is blank. I'll show you why in a second. Building code, so 1A. So if I want the box for 1A to be checked, I'll simply select it. If there's no 1A for this, for building code, I don't select anything. No box will be checked. Permit ap application date, I can select it and enter in a new date. 
and that's the value that will show. So if you don't select the comment, it won't show on the report. Again, we've already done all the work on this form. We've set up all these notes to map to the PDF form and we'll have a separate tutorial that explains how to do this on your own. So roof covering, I'm gonna come in here and say one or more roof coverings do not meet the requirements of answer A or B. For asphalt finger, uh, shingles, I'm gonna say yes, this is, uh, this is the type of roof that we have and you know the uh, FBC and the year. And again, you could type in whatever you want in here. I'm gonna go back to insert PDF. And normally you'll only go to fill and print form and click this populate at the very end when you've collected all your data or you've downloaded the inspection from mobile back onto the desktop. You'll notice here on Winmit, I had selected 1A. I had put in a permanent application date. For asphalt shingles, I had said that's the type. And I put in FBC and I put in the year. Nothing else has been filled out yet because I haven't gone through and done that. I'm gonna click on save. So going back to this, just kind of flip through, same thing on all the tabs. You're just selecting the comments that are correct and that you wanna populate within this form. Uh, if I go back to opening protection here on the bottom, again, this is how we split this up. This is how we named the PDF. We created notes. So under windows or entry doors, if you know the WinMIT form, this will make sense. This is your opening protection. Uh, for the windows or entry doors, is it an NA? Is it B, you know, how should that be selected? So you would simply check those that you want to appear on the report. So I can go through here and say true, uh, skylights, and all, and all this other information. Um, you can change the value of the word yes or the word true to be anything you want. As long as the comment is selected, the note is what's going to cause that box to be checked on the report. So if you'd rather add some more information in there to make more sense to you, because maybe you're new with the form, that's perfectly fine. We were just using true and yes as examples to say, hey, yes, this is the item that we want to select. I'm going to go back and I'm going to populate this real quick. And you can see at the bottom. Uh, well, inspect. so I had shown you the qualified inspector field. Um, that tab was blank. That's because for most inspectors, they're running a copy of HIP that's only for them. You could type this information in once, the licensing and everything else. ST means this is a static field, so the value never changes. So once you save the form, those values will stay there for every single inspection unless you change them for a future inspection. NS means non-static, so it's going to grab fresh values every single time. Static is just going to populate this. If you did have multiple inspectors, for example, maybe you're finalizing reports for inspectors uh, on your team, you can actually add a note under that qualified inspector tab called inspector name and have a bunch of names there or a drop down list, and then that would populate this list. I had also gone through, I had checked a few things you saw a second ago glass, uh, glazed glass block, I selected B, skylights, I selected A. So all that information is going to populate now. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate report. Now, I'm not gonna have a table of contents if I'm just doing a wind mitt report. I'm not, I don't need a summary. I'm actually not gonna check the wind mitigation section either because that's gonna print a normal hip looking uh, template section that lists out exactly the things that we've just selected. The form itself that we've inserted right here that we saved to the template and set to appear at the end of the report. That's actually what we want. This wind mitigation section is just here to collect all that data so that section shows up on the desktop or otherwise. You could select these if you're combining things, but typically for a wind mitigation, for example, that's normally a separate report. But there's many other forms that you may be doing, such as a pest inspection form, that you may want combined with your inspection report and then you would have all your normal inspection sections here and you would have that form. So I'll, that's ultimately a decision up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Form opens up, it does have a cover page so you can create your nice looking cover exactly like you want. And here's our wind mitigation form. So I didn't select everything but you can see the things that I did select. So the client information page automatically populated all those fields. Building code, I selected A, I put in a year built, I put in a date, um, I had checked asphalt shingle roof, I had put in the FBC number and the year 
of the original installment, selected C. So all these items are automatically selected. Uh, the inspector initials will come from the, uh, the report settings tab within Home Inspector Pro. So you can put your initials there. And then the client signature will come directly from client info. And you can map those into your uh, PDF form if you're creating a new PDF form with the WinMit, it's already there and so it'll map for you automatically. So all this data will pull in. Uh, we had checked those boxes on glazed uh, entry doors and non-glazed openings. So you can see those boxes are checked there. And just went through that example quickly. Uh, any other fields that you have that we filled out? Again, we didn't fill in everything, but that stuff would all fill out here automatically. So there's a lot to this feature. It's super powerful. We expect people to create all sorts of forms that are custom for themselves. We at Home Inspector Pro also adding in forms that will come stock with the program based on things that we get the most requests for. So we know we have a lot of forms, for example, for Florida inspectors that they use all the time. We also have pest inspection forms that are used across the nation. And then some states like Texas have specific forms and we're creating specific forms uh, for those inspectors as well. But this feature that we're using, you can create on your own and we'll have a separate tutorial going over how to create your own form or your own certificate or whatever it is that you'd like to create that's originally a PDF that you wanna populate with data from Home Inspector Pro and then merge into your final report. The nice thing is, is that these features will show up and they'll work in the PDF or the web-based version of the report. There's no difference between the two. If you have any questions on this, please feel free to contact our help desk and we'd be happy to help you out.